Benson. Nine. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brigadier General Fred Ruggiero, Director of Air Force Public Affairs, and this will be a single-issue press briefing regarding the Air Force's suspension of three Boeing Integrated Defense Systems business units. Acting Secretary of the Air Force, Mr. Peter B. Teets, will make a brief statement and will then take your questions. Uh, this session is on the record. Any questions on any other issues can be directed to the Air Force press desk. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Teets. Thanks, Fred. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for coming today. I know it's uh, a little late on a Friday afternoon, but I'm delighted that you're here. In July of 2003, the Air Force suspended three Boeing Integrated Defense Systems business units for unlawful possession of a competitor's proprietary information during the 1998 Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle Source Selection. The Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle, or EELV, is the family of rockets that make up our primary platform for launching satellites into space. The suspensions were issued against the Boeing Company's launch systems, Boeing Launch Services, and Delta Program business units. These suspensions, the longest suspensions of a major defense contractor, effectively banned Boeing from competing for government launch contracts. In addition, the Air Force reallocated launches under an EELV launch contract, which was awarded in October 1998 and is known as BY-1. Under this reallocation, the total number of Boeing launches was reduced from 20 to 12, and those launches were awarded to Lockheed Martin. The Air Force also awarded three additional launches under the EELV BY-2 procurement to Lockheed Martin. To protect the government's interest, an interim agreement between the Air Force and Boeing has been signed. In it, the Air Force may rebuke the, uh, may revoke the agreement and reinstate suspensions in the event Boeing is indicted or convicted or if new evidence is discovered. In addition, Boeing has reimbursed $1.9 million to the Air Force for its costs of reviewing this matter and is required to submit to outside verification of its remedial measures and its compliance with the interim agreement through a special compliance officer who will report to the Air Force. The special compliance officer will be Mr. George Babbitt, the former commander of Air Force Materiel Command. Boeing has also agreed that all of its costs related to the EELV misconduct and the improvements to its ethics program are unallowable including its costs of defending the Lockheed Martin civil litigation. We took these actions because the cornerstone of the Air Force's acquisition uh, philosophy is integrity in all phases of the procurement process by both the government and our industry colleagues. This has been the longest suspension of a major defense contractor, and it demonstrates how seriously we take the issue of procurement integrity. Today, I am announcing that we have lifted the suspension of these three business, Boeing business units and have made them a full partner again on our national security space team. Over the past 20 months, Boeing has taken serious corrective actions to once again be counted as a contractor eligible to compete for government launch contracts. Boeing's management from the CEO down took responsibility for the company's ethical breaches and has worked very hard to correct the problems and prevent such violations from occurring in the future. Corrective actions that Boeing has taken include submitting to four independent reviews of its ethics and business processes, two of which were led by former Senator Rudman, and agreeing to implement recommendations of those reviews executing a comprehensive agreement with the Air Force, submitting to outside verification of its remedial measures, and perhaps most important, making everyone in the Boeing company aware that they must adhere to the highest integrity standards. I cannot stress enough how important integrity is to the procurement process, and I believe Boeing has taken the appropriate corrective actions to be counted as a member of our national security government contractor team again. 
We hope that everyone who does business with the Air Force takes note of this case and is reminded that we take ethical breaches very seriously and will not hesitate to impose sanctions when necessary to protect the procurement process, regardless of the size of the contractor involved. Today, national security space programs are vital to the nation's leadership and are critical to our ability to wage war and provide for the country's security. I have stated many times that I believe it is imperative that we have two proven launch systems so we have assured access to space. Because of that, I am very pleased to have Boeing back as a viable launch provider along with Lockheed Martin. Now I would be happy to take questions from you at this juncture. I do want to introduce a couple people over here uh, on the side that uh, perhaps can be helpful too in answering uh, detailed questions. One is Steve Shaw, who is the Air Force suspension and debarment official uh, in the General Counsel's office. The other is Craig Cooning, Major General Craig Cooning, who is the Director of Space Acquisition in the office of the Under Secretary of the Air Force. With that, please, uh, may I? Um, Pete, I wonder, just, just for the ground washed up here, I wonder what, what could this mean? Could this mean for Boeing in terms of contracts, especially over the short term? And will this, will this getting back two launch, launch contractors help you more quickly launch key spy satellites that you need? We uh, have a need to step back now a couple of paces and start to engage Boeing in a meaningful discussion of a strategy for how we will proceed on by three. We've had some preliminary discussions with Lockheed Martin. We'll broaden that involvement now and start to discuss with Boeing how would we put together the right acquisition strategy for by three. By three itself probably won't be uh, awarded until next year, I'll say 2006, and we'll start to acquire launches on by 3 at that time. So we've got a few months to get a strategy together, to get an RFP out, to start to see uh, proposals back in and do some evaluation to uh, uh, sort our way f on the way forward. Now in the near term, I do believe that there are some infrastructure sustainment costs that uh, will be awarded to Boeing so that we can help them uh, bridge this gap uh, uh, as they go forward, just as we have uh, helped provide infrastructure sustainment costs to Lockheed Martin. How much, how much are you talking about? Uh, what are we talking about? 80? Well, it's over 04 and 05, about 130, maybe 140 million, sir. Okay, and over the 04 and 05, 130 or 140 million dollars in that ballpark. And you can't give us a ballpark figure mm -hmm. on, on the buy three on what it might mean in terms of money for both firms. Don't well, we, uh, we can a little bit later. And what, uh, the reason I'm hedging on that a little bit is we need to go through a process now of engaging Boeing in some discussions on exactly how the sustainment costs will uh, uh, merge in with the individual unit buys that we're going to make and formulate a strategy. But there will be a significant number of launches acquired. And the spy satellites, will this help you to more quickly launch these satellites now that you've got both back on board? Well, they will certainly allow, allow us to continue to uh, launch uh, National Reconnaissance Office satellites. And yes, the NRO is a, a large user of EELVs. Please. So you said that this uh, interim agreement is um, some in some way contingent on the criminal case? Did you? No, um, I'm saying that if the criminal case, the, as you know, there's an open Department of Justice uh, investigation and activity going uh, surrounding the Boeing company, if that uh, ongoing activity results in suspension of uh, individuals within Boeing or results in new evidence being discovered, uh, we will be certainly able to reinstate the suspension of, of Boeing. And that's the only point I was trying to make there. If, if those uh, DOJ investigations reveal something new that we haven't seen before, it could result in uh, further action. Amy? Um, you mentioned that you thought that the uh, by 3 launches could be on contract as soon as 06, which would probably mean they wouldn't start launching until 08. Right. So are there any launches between now and then that would need to be either sole sourced or somehow competed separate from by three or separate from by two? No, we're, we're good uh, to go for 06 and 07. Please. 
On the point you raised earlier um, on the Department of Justice issue, the federal prosecutor seemed to express when Michael Sears was sentenced that he did not have a lot of faith that things in Boeing were as good as, as kind of what the Air Force has expressed. It seems like there's a tension between the prosecutor's position and certainly Boeing's, and Air Force seems to be saying no, that the, the internal processes have taken place in Boeing and things are all right. Where is the disconnect here? Why does the prosecutor seem to have so much less faith that things are fine in Boeing than the Air Force? Well, I'll just say that um, I, I don't know all of the details associated with the Department of Justice investigation. I do know that we've had, through our general counsel's office, some discussions with the Department of Justice, and our belief is that uh, there's not likely to be further uh, um, revelations of uh, uh, any inappropriate behavior on the part of Boeing people for months. Uh, ahead. That is to say, uh, their investigation is ongoing and it's likely to be ongoing for a good number of months. And so, um, if those investigations do indeed result in the discovery of some new evidence or uh, inappropriate behavior, we will act accordingly. And just a, a, a figure, you said 1.9 million? Was I that, did. That's 1.9. And what was that figure for? That's to pay the costs that we have incurred to. Uh, create the administrative agreement and uh, uh, go through the whole suspension process. Please, Tom. On the cost issue, the, the, the cost to the ELV program from this whole procurement integrity problem was about $230 million. The Air Force has acknowledged that. Why has Boeing not been zinged a larger amount? I mean, the LA Times today threw out a figure of like $170 million. I mean, what's the deal? Why only one9 when you've got a $220 million increase to the program? Um, the Department of Justice will include considerations for uh, damages to the government in their investigation and their uh, uh, action against Boeing. As far as the Air Force is concerned, uh, our books have been righted uh, by the suspension activity, by the reallocation of uh, launches, by uh, all of the actions that we've taken up to now. And so depending on I mean, the, the Department of Justice investigation is a separate uh, investigation completely. And I, I can't really tell you what that's going to result in. Maybe I don't know. From a global civil settlement to put in this $200 million, is that what you're kind of saying? Uh, it could be in a global civil settlement of some kind, yes. So they will be remedied somehow. They won't be just hanging out there. The, as far as the Air Force is concerned, uh, at this point in time, the matter is now closed. I want to follow up. Last year, you said, you said a couple times this thing may get lifted, and it didn't happen. What are some of the factors that came to play in the last two or three months that allowed today to happen? I mean, was the Michael Sears conviction and sentencing part of that factor? Well, Tony, you, you will recall that uh, in late September, which is kind of when I made the statement that we were close to being able to lift the suspension on Boeing, uh, new information surfaced in a rather rapid way. When uh, Darlene Drurian was sentenced and her plea agreement was made public, uh, I believe in early October, there were new revelations that came forth that caused the Air Force to need to do some additional investigation. The Air Force has done that additional investigation, and we find that uh, that did not uh, cause us uh, reason to question the ability of Boeing to be a responsible contractor today and to deal uh, with ourselves. That investigation did take some time. Now, uh, having said that and having gone through the Darlene Drurian situation, very frankly, we wanted to wait until uh, Mike Sears was sentenced and to see whether or not there was any new additional information that we hadn't considered before. Uh, before we lifted the suspension. And of course, last week he was sentenced, and to my knowledge, there was not additional information uh, that came forward at that time. I gave you a code for level to proceed. Correct. Okay, thanks. Exactly right. Please, Jeremy. No, I'm sorry, please. Yes, please do, Steve. I'm not sure that Tony understood that point. Uh, the 1.9 million is the 
the cost of our review internally of this matter and, and the projected cost of what it's going to be for my office to oversee the interim administrative agreement, there may very well be other damages that the Air Force has suffered by reason of the underlying misconduct in the EELV matter, and that's within the scope of what the Justice Department is doing. So this is not the $1.9 million is not a settlement by Boeing of its liability on EELV. It's only a payment of the Air Force's costs of reviewing the matter. <laughs> Jeremy? Is Boeing on, on the hook for any of the costs of the West Coast launch pad? Or is that a matter for the Justice Department to consider? Again, I suppose that that can be something that the Justice Department uh, looks into, and uh, that is an, a completely independent investigation. I, I would tell you that when uh, we decided to move uh, Lockheed Martin Atlas capability to the West Coast, we gained assured access from the West Coast. Uh, and from my point of view, what we're trying to do is make certain that we have assured access to space. So that was a plus for the Air Force. Amy? If you step back and look at the events of the past couple of years, it, do you think that the Air Force should advocate, will advocate, or shouldn't advocate for maybe some, some changes in the revolving door policies and laws? Well, I do think that the whole issue of procurement integrity is of the utmost importance. I think the rules and the laws that are in place today provide adequate safeguards for proper conduct, but they need to be followed, and we need to make certain that people are following them. And we all know that uh, Darlene Drurian violated, uh, self-admittedly violated uh, some of those uh, laws relating to revolving door uh, policies. And so um, I think this sends a certain signal, this case sends a certain signal to the whole industry and, uh, and the government as well that inappropriate behavior and violation of uh, procurement integrity will simply not be tolerated. Uh, it's a strong message that's gone out in the case of both Darlene and Mike Sears laws are okay as they stand, then do you think oversight is correct to actually monitor how people do or don't follow them? Well, I think we'll all improve our oversight uh, activity and, and sharpen the pencil, so to speak, and I think this is a good wake-up call on that subject. Please. Do you have any sense of how much the contracts that Boeing wasn't allowed to compete for over this last 18 months was worth, and otherwise how much they potentially lost just from the suspension? I can't quantify it for you uh, uh, precisely. I, I do know that on any ongoing business, it is very, very important to have uh, a continuing flow of revenue and a continuing flow of work in the factory. And I know that this has caused some amount of financial difficulty for Boeing, and uh, frankly, they've had some layoffs in Decatur, Alabama. Uh, it's been, it, it has been a difficult, uh, economic situation for Boeing. Um, on the other hand, I think it, uh, it was appropriate and proper for the Air Force to suspend them and to take the actions that we did. And it'd be very difficult for me to quantify uh, the exact financial loss that Boeing has suffered. But just Please. to follow up on that, in July 2003, when this was announced, I think you, had, you, you listed a $1 billion estimate of the cost to Boeing uh, from, from the reallocation of launches and, and, and uh, the suspension. That was a billion dollars in revenues. Um, Has anything changed in the last, I mean, that was supposed to be a 60 or 90 day suspension since it's been 20 months. I mean, has anything changed to that estimate? Is that still in the right ballpark? Um, it, it might be up slightly because there were some buy two launches awarded to Lockheed Martin that otherwise might have been competed by Boeing and uh, perhaps awarded to Boeing under a different scenario. So there are a lot of might have been uh, kinds of things there. But it, it's not dramatically up. If it was a billion dollars before, uh, perhaps there's another $200 million or something like that. Please. By three, just a couple nuts and bolts questions. How many launches over what time period and when might you make a down select, just roughly? Well, that's exactly what we want to do throughout the balance of this year. And as I say, we will now re-engage Boeing in a meaningful way. We'll look at our manifest. We'll see what uh, um, the appropriate uh, 
procurement acquisition strategy should be. I would hope that before the end of the summer we'll have that complete. I would hope that we would have uh, uh, a solid acquisition strategy by the end of the summer and move out accordingly. Now, what are our needs? Well, uh, there will be uh, RFPs put out that will allow both Boeing and Lockheed Martin to respond, and th their response will probably come in late this year or early next year in that ballpark. And then it will be for a number of launches that we decide is a smart number to be acquiring, and it will probably be for a two, three year period, something like that. So you, there might be, you know, just ballpark, 18, 20 launches, something like that, maybe 24, okay. but in that ballpark. Talking early next year, is it the earliest you would award? Correct. Okay. Thanks. Please. It seems like every revelation that has come out or grown out of the Boeing scandal, both with this and the tankers, has come from somewhere else, either from a congressional investigation, Department of Justice, GAO. Do you feel that enough has been done inside the Air Force in terms of oversight, in terms of being able to find these problems? Within the, within the service and its contractors so that you don't have to wait for Department of Justice to come up with something or from Congress or from GAO? Well, I think it's a fair question that you ask. And I, the answer to that is yes, I do think that the Air Force has been extremely vigilant over the course of these last uh, couple of years. I will say that uh, as part of this administrative agreement that I, I mentioned in my conversation, uh, the Air Force will have um, a, an official uh, living with Boeing that will be monitoring their ethical behavior, their uh, uh, business conduct practices and so forth. He will be inside Boeing, uh, uh, the cost of which will be borne by Boeing, but he'll be reporting to the Air Force. And so we'll have this three-year period to have some pretty intense insight into what are the business practices, what is the ethical program, and is it being maintained and sustained. I'm confident now that the, the program that Boeing has put in place, the emphasis that Harry Stonecipher has put on uh, integrity in, in uh, business practices and ethical behavior, is a strong program. And uh, we'll be monitoring that over the course of the next three years. Steve, would you like to add to that? Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, actually, the ELV allegations were brought to the Air Force, and we brought them to the Justice Department. So that really was an Air Force-initiated uh, 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 investigation. Uh, in addition to that, the, the Druian matter, the real details of that uh, came out of an internal investigation that was done by Boeing. And that, that I think, is a, a good evidence of how Boeing was addressing these kinds of problems at, at that time, anyway, which is, I think, uh, 2002 and, uh, and 2003. So that was really a Boeing matter to the Air Force and to Justice, and ELV was an Air Force matter to Justice. So these weren't things that were initiated by the Justice Department. Well, Mr. Shaw is up there. Can he sure. elaborate on one thing? You said it seemed the Air Force's belief, if there are any more shoes to drop, so to speak, on Boeing officials, and such actions wouldn't take place for a, m a month from now rather than two or three months or so. Can, can you shed some light on that? Well, we, we don't have any indication that any other shoes are going to drop ever, but the, I think the reference to the timeline was that uh, our understanding is that Boeing is uh, discussing the matter with the Justice Department on a global scale, and the anticipation is that nothing will be resolved from that, if at all, uh, within the next several months. Uh, and that, uh, in, in a sense, those are their technically investigations are continuing, but uh, they're really more a dialogue with Boeing, and, and we don't anticipate uh, investigation uh, in the sense of new witnesses and new documents appearing. So you, you, part of your thinking was this could drag, the justice and then discussions could drag on for months while you're waiting for by three to be dealt with? And that's right, and, that, and that's the reason this is called an interim administrative agreement. Uh, it's very unusual to have a, an agreement called that, and it's called that uh, deliberately for the reason that if these other things happen, if there's an indictment, if there's a conviction, uh, we can choose to uh, terminate the agreement at our option and res uh, resuspend, or if there's new evidence. So. Thank you. Please, Jeremy. Oh, sorry. Would you mind uh, elaborating on your, your point about how Boeing's costs on this matter aren't allowable? Can you talk a little bit sure. about what that means? Sure. Um, in any contractor's uh, uh, billing activity, um, 
allowable costs are accumulated, billed to the government, and and uh, paid. Unallowable costs cannot be billed to the government. And so what we're saying is these costs that I enumerated in my statement as being unallowable and expressly unallowable will not be billed to the government. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Amy? Actually, I got two questions. Okay. Uh, to follow up on Tony's question. Um, if there were more findings that came out of the tanker investigation, would that necessarily have an effect on the EELV situation? And I also have a second one. Well, it's such a hypothetical question because I'd have to ask you what linkages there might be and so on and so forth. But uh, any uh, inappropriate activity uh, on the part of any of our contractors will lead to a thorough investigation of that activity and appropriate action will be taken. And our hands certainly are not tied. Uh, if, if uh, something comes out of the tanker investigation that uh, could influence uh, uh, our uh, relationship on EELV, then yeah, it could flow. I mean, it depends on on the conditions. Okay. And secondly, um, folks have been pretty upfront about the fact that the buy one pricing just didn't fall through for the it fell through for the contractors, and for whatever reason, business case changed and whatnot. Right. Um, by reallocating those Boeing launches to Lockheed, in a sense, the net effect to Lockheed is that they're losing more money because they have more launches that cost a certain amount of money that they can't recoup the cost on. So can you make a comment about that? Um, yes. Uh, Lockheed Martin was willing to uh, honor its buy one uh, prices, and uh, that's exactly what the Air Force uh, has moved forward with in these reallocated launches. On the other hand, as you know, we have started to uh, fund infrastructure uh, sustainment costs uh, in future years. And as those launches are uh, uh, taking place, uh, we will expect some credits back from both contractors that reflect uh, the infrastructure sustainment effect on those prices. So what I'm really saying at the bottom line is I think Lockheed Martin had a reasonable business deal with the buy one launches and similarly uh, Boeing was penalized by losing the, the buy one uh, launches. I guess uh, I'd be happy to take one more if there is another one, or if not, I'm glad we've satisfied your curiosity. And I thank you all very much. Is infrastructure and yep. insured access funding synonymous? Um, uh, Craig, help me here. I don't know about the terminology. Uh, ask it again, Jeremy. When you, when you talk about the infrastructure costs that you've picked up for Lockheed and now Boeing will be eligible for, is that synonymous with when you've talked about budget requests for assured access, like 06 being 340 million? They're related, but they're not exactly the same. Uh, and uh, the, the key thing, the, the assured access for us was a bridge as we recognized that the commercial marketplace had fallen off. When we go forward on buy three, we're going to completely restructure our contract vehicles, one, to compensate for things such as mission assurance, uh, sustaining engineering, support of the launch pad, so we'll have that national capability with two providers on both coasts. And, and so really uh, um, the, uh, the infrastructure costs are refinement of the assured access. Sure. And so in the future those may be built in to yes. the, to the yes. contracts up front rather than having a separate request list? Yes, they will be, definitely. Thank you all very much. Have a good weekend.